The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Popolizio is a wondrous thing. And for you Pack Wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Pop Ins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. Welcome back to the very first in-season episode of the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast. Now that practice is officially underway for the 2019-20 NC State season, I'm your host of NC State Athletics Alone Podcast, NC State Director of Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt, and I'm joined by the head coach of the Wolfpack, Pat Popolizio. Good morning, Brian. Doing all right? Pat, it is the morning. We yeah. usually do this usually in, the in the afternoon. afternoon so it's yeah, good. Yeah. Glad you woke up. Came and in here. Me. Yeah, you came in here. It looks like you uh, got a beautiful haircut there. I do. I trimmed. The wife recommended it. Buzzed her, it up. Her recommendation was yeah. well received, too. Yeah, it's good. But uh, last episode of the podcast, you know, we broke down the upcoming schedule. If you missed that last episode, go back and listen to our archives. What was the feedback you received from fans about the schedule you guys put together for this upcoming season? You know, it's a good balance of heavy competition at some tournaments and obviously some some big duels that will be at home later in the season and some new teams we're getting ready to see. Uh, obviously, we always want to add some Big Ten, Big 12 teams here, but it didn't work out this year. So we'll, we'll continue to work hard for next year to get somebody in, in town or, or go on the road to make sure we can get a home and away with them. But that would be the idea situation every year. So we'll keep working at that. I'm going to take a quick second and hawk some of those season tickets right now. Wolfpack fans can purchase your home tickets to all five home duels that are going to be held inside Reynolds Coliseum this year. Just visit gopack.com slash buy tickets. And the season's fast approaching. The first home duel is going to be Friday, November 15th against Old Dominion. And that duel is looking better and better on paper as the more preseason rankings coming out. The two teams have a combined 11 ranked wrestlers. Buy your tickets now. GoPack.com slash buy tickets. Pat, you can upgrade your seat. We can upgrade your seat over there. Yeah. Some nice leather recliners. I mean, it's really going to be a good environment. Yeah. Those seats are really moving. Seeing, yeah, duels with uh, popcorn in, in one hand and. Who knows, with the new laws that they passed here, we might see something else in the other hand. Uh, a little bit of a tease by you. I yeah. Know, I know you're working Though on the that. The wolfy, the toughy there, that, that looks like it's your style. Can't name certain brands on here, but yeah, I remember yeah. what you're referring to. But. Yeah. And also, one last call to sign up for the longest title of any golf function I've ever heard of, but the annual Wolfpack Wrestling Club Golfing with Wolves Golf Classic. I, did you come up with that name, by the way? Um, might have, I might have thrown one of those in there, but I think, I think everybody else think, jumped in with the seven other man, names to that. Golf's in there a couple times, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the golf classic is going to be held Friday, October twenty fifth at the Wildwood Green Golf Club here in Raleigh. You do not have to be a golfer to attend; you can just mingle with the coaches and former wrestlers. But please visit WolfpackWrestlingClub dot org to register or to donate to this great alumni event. Pat, how is that event shaping up? It's good. Uh, we're over right now the, where we were last year at this time, um, this close to the event. We checked the weather. Weather looks like it's going to be solid, 70 degrees in a uh, little overcast, but we're, we're ready to roll with that. Um, and we could use the support as those guys last night, their flights got changed and uh, we had to rebook them. So. This, that's where this cause comes into effect to, to fund these trips when uh, American Airline cancels their flight and we get hit with a three thousand dollar last minute flight. So, wasn't sure if you were going to call out certain airlines, American, but American Airlines. You can go to Twitter. There is a lot of talk last night, but you mentioned it. You have a few guys. They're going over to Russia to compete in a tournament. Timmy McCall. Lee Davis, Tommy Gant, they're all going to be wrestling. Kevin Jack is going to be a, going over there to coach. Yeah. A little bit of a ver- adversity in the travel, but it's good for them. a good opportunity in this yeah. tournament here. We always train these guys for adversity, and they got it thrown at them. Hopefully their luggage gets lost as well. Um, we'll see how Lee handles that overseas training and just a T-shirt and shorts for five days. So it'll be Isn't good Isn't a wrestler supposed to pack a singlet in the backpack they, uh, just they, in they case? They should know. We'll see if they did that or not. Otherwise, they're going to show up wrestling and uh, someone else's. They're going to be sharing. All three of them will be sharing one singlet back to back. 
Speaking of Russia, uh, Mach was recently over in yep. Russia. Um, I, I guess I come on. Where, what weight class is he going to go to to try out for the Olympics? So he was at 92 kilos, kind of just testing it, seeing uh, if he wants to go up or down. He's kind of in the middle right now, and he's got to make that commitment here real soon. Uh, NYAC is coming up mid-November as well, so a lot of those guys will be in action there. But that's a weight, you know, Mach's got to decide where he wants to go, and uh, that's something we're going to figure out this week. But he's he's got a lot of options, and that's why he went overseas to continue to get better. And he, he won one match and lost the last one 4-3. So he's, he's continuing to, to make that progress, but it's, you know, it's always that international scene. Every you got to be on your A game at every every competition you go to because uh, there is some high level wrestling and you know peaking at the right time is obviously extremely important for those guys. By the way, Kevin Jack really gained that passport stamped here. First yes. Estonia, now Russia, throwing them right in there, and it's crazy. The youngest guys going there to coach those guys, so okay. let's uh, we'll see. Maybe they'll throw Singlet on too. <laughs> at what weight? Uh, okay. uh, yeah, that answer. Eighty six kilo. <laughs> Again, visit Wolfpack Wrestling Club dot org to sign up to either participate in the golf outing or if you just want to come and hang out with Wolfpack Wrestling, a great dinner and award show afterwards. But by the way, huge promotion just about being finalized for that Virginia Tech duel on February 14th. And we aren't quite ready to release details, but we are still in the process of seeing it through. But I can guarantee you will want to be one of the first 300 fans into that duel for that giveaway. I'm pretty sure this is the first giveaway at this level in college wrestling. Pat, stepping up. I came up with this idea. I'm yep. taking full credit for it. I'm, I'm impressed. And but I, it, it's a really great idea. Let's just fix that. There's only 299 because I'm taking uh, one myself. And the per- I know someone else who wa- who's claiming right. a few others. But, right. again, we're going to release Virginia Tech Duel, one of the best giveaways that we've ever done here at NC State. But, Pat, practice is underway very early in that process. What is the normal flow like for you guys during a typical practice? Yeah, you know, we're uh, we're in sync now. We're going through another training phase. We were doing a lot of running and conditioning for the last six weeks, and now it's switching to a little more drilling, a little more live wrestling, and uh, probably a little more intense conditioning, but just not as drawn out as what we were doing in the mornings with some of the runs and lifts that we were doing. So, you know, now it's time to build that that core strength and get ready for competition. And it is. It's a long, long season. So, you know, we want to make sure conditioning is, is rock solid as we start. And then you want to make that that push to the end of the season. So little by little, you know, we want to make make sure guys are technically sound and, and focusing on their weaknesses and, and staying strong with their strengths. And a lot of guys are doing that right now as we speak. There's guys currently in the room, so that's a good thing. I walked in there and saw, you know, about five or six groups doing individual workouts with Donnie, Adam, and uh, Timmy just left, so they're not working with him right now. Now, you guys have some weights wide open for a starting spot. How much do you guys focus on those individuals competing for those weight classes compared to your more established starters? I think it's one of those, you know, it's a new year, so we got to restart everything. But I think the experience some of those guys have, you know, it's going to be hard to beat a guy out of our lineup like Hayden. Um, so, you know, I'd like to say that that's a lock, but in this sport, there are guys that, that are new and are developing. And so there are other weights right now that are going to be up for grabs. But I, I'd like to say, you know, there's five or six guys right now in our lineup that have proven that they can beat anybody in the country. So it's going to be a challenge to beat those guys out of our lineup. But we do have some good depth, and I'm excited to see who steps up and uh, takes advantage of, of that opportunity. And, and you might see some new faces at some, some weights where you thought maybe, you know, so-and-so is going to be a returner. And now you got a young guy that's pushing to, to take that spot. And uh, there's there's a couple weights, 33, 49, and heavyweight. We'll head out to Citadel to kind of do some prelims and wrestle offs, and we'll do the final ones right here in our in our November. I want to say eighth would be a wrestle. You're nine, wrong, but nine, we're, we're going to bring that. All right, you know, I'll let I you get that. that November eighth, ninth. All the days are blending okay. together. I know okay. it's a weekend. Pat, you're a very busy guy. We understand that. Yeah. I I love you how keep you that in check. I love how you establish that on every podcast. Yeah. But the Citadel Open, you are sending those three weight classes down. That's going to be the first weekend in November. But 
Coming back after that tournament, wanted to remind fans, NC State Wrestling will hold the annual wrestle-offs on Saturday, November 9th out at Carter-Finley Stadium. Now, we're still waiting on the football game time for that one as NC State will host Clemson. But as soon as we find out time and specific locations at the stadium for the wrestle-offs, we're going to let our fans know. And you've mentioned it a few times on here, but now with some practices under your belt, how much competition will you have for this year's wrestle-offs? It's going to be a lot. Um, plan on and everybody wrestling in there that's you know ready to go so there'll be a lot of weights contested and you're going to see some really good matches but probably have 10 definitely 10 matches and our goal is to get every starter that's going to be wrestling that following week on the mat because that's going to be our first competition for a lot of guys Talking about the preseason, upcoming campaign, pretty cool stat I came across the other day working on a season preview piece. But over the last two years, six of your graduating wrestlers have found their ways into college coaching already, including three members from last year's senior class. Sean Fowles went out to Cal Poly. Malik McDonald went to Clarion. Justin Oliver, he's now at Buffalo. But your coaching tree continues to grow. You, Donnie, and Adam have to be pretty proud of these guys are moving right into the college ranks. Yeah, it, you know, that's exciting to see those guys take the next step in their career. They've obviously done tremendous things for a program here and your great leadership that all those guys have. And it's a, it'll be exciting to see how their, their career path goes because it's starting off. It's not an easy thing to do, jumping around from, you know, two years here, three years there, and you keep climbing the coaching rankings. So those guys are hard workers and they got great personality. So they're going to do some big things and it makes our sport better. You know, having the right people in, in the right positions and coaching obviously makes everybody better. And those guys are going to do that. So hats off to them. All right, Pat, that was a nice little catch up as the season inches closer. Now here after preseason has ended and practice has started, we appreciate you catching us up on everything Wolfpack wrestling. We're always very interested in yeah, here we go. I mean, you're writing notes as we go. Yeah, this, I'm trying to get you, you know, yeah, know. some information that you. you know, well, I texted you that we're doing this. You could have just texted I, me. This. Well, you know, you throw questions at me, so I'm going to throw them back at you. But anyway, I'm going to let you announce it. The team captains have been named for this year. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. So we'll talk about that a little bit. But we had uh, the guys voted last week, right before we left for fall break, and. You know, this year's team, the attitude and mentality is, is about as good as I've been around a group of guys. So when you get named a captain from this team, it obviously shows the commitment and the belief that this these guys have. So we went with five um, as we did the votes. You know, there were a couple that were straight across the board, and then there were a few that were grouped together. So we figured with having as many guys as we do, we're going to have five captains, and they are Hayden, Trent, Tariq, AJ and Renan made the board as well. So um, it's exciting to see those guys and the leadership that they bring, but all are unique in their own way and uh, will help guide us this year. And that's, you know, when you look at some adversity through the season, these are guys that you're going to rely on heavily to, to push through some challenging things. No matter what season you're in, there's always going to be some challenges, but these guys are going to have the mentality to take this team to the next level. So that's exciting to see. I have some great news you dropped here on the podcast. Yes, big news. What else you want to talk about? Well, I'm just glad you got your, your new haircut look good. <laughs> it, it was bad before. So, yeah, it's looking a lot better now. But, Pat, um, that I'm going to cut us off here because I actually caught up with Earl Smith of the Open Mat. We're going to talk some preseason national rankings. My favorite. I was going to say. Favorite. What Love is the you, rankings. What is your dislike for preseason national rankings? This is what I think of the rankings. Ready? There you go. And where's the garbage can? There it is. Now, see, that's why I didn't have you join us for the interview. Yep. I interviewed Earl. The final rankings come out usually third week in March. So I I'll let you know. You just want to get out there and wrestle. Yeah. Settle well, it just, on the mat. I mean, at the end of the day, the rankings are – it's politics. It's people's favorites. It's people who think – they like this school or that guy better, and I don't know. I just don't get caught in that. I know our guys do a good job not getting caught in it, and uh, that's what I love about wrestling is we don't have to worry about them and go out and prove yourself. So, Pat, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the golf outing. Sounds like a great weekend of action, and let's get everybody out for these wrestle-offs November 9th and ODU on November 15th. It's really coming cl uh, fast here. Yeah, we'll hope to see you at some events. Starting to make this a yearly tradition now on the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast. We're going to be talking preseason NCAA rankings now. 
I'm a stats geek and I enjoy looking at these rankings each week, but Pat hates rankings and he just wants to wrestle. So I told Pat to go get a workout on that Stairmaster and join in us via Skype back for a second straight year to break down his preseason rankings. We have Earl Smith of the Open Mat. Earl, thanks for once again for taking the time to give our fans a little perspective on where you see the Wolfpack nationally prior to this season starting. Yeah, thanks for having me on again, Brian. It's always fun to talk uh, NC State wrestling. Um, I think I said last year I live in ACC country, so um, I try to follow the program pretty closely. Now, I will have to say first, before we get into the preseason rankings, I know this is a wrestling podcast, but we have to talk some baseball first. You are a huge Washington Nationals fan, and we're taping this interview during the NLCS, and I don't want to jinx your squad, so we're not going to say where the series is at. But the Washington Nationals, a huge NC State connection. Do you know what it is? Uh, yes, they're starting shortstop Trey Turner, uh, NC State player. Um, he's you know one of my favorite Nats. He's a guy that brings a lot of energy to the team. Is uh, you know super fast, uh, great athlete, pretty much uh, just a good all around player. So uh, yeah, I love him and. Uh, I, I do like that NC State connection there. I was going to say, give our fans a little scatter report. Let us know what type of season has Trey had this year. Um, he was actually, uh, I was at the fourth game of the season. Um, that was Bryce Harper's first game back in D.C. And Trey broke his finger uh, on a bunt. And he missed, uh, I don't know, maybe a month and a half or so. And the team really struggled with him out of the lineup and um, he came back probably a little too early, and even I think right now he still can't hold the bat properly because of uh, you know, the after effects of this broken finger. But as soon as he got back into the lineup, they kind of started to hit their stride. So um, his numbers aren't you know excellent because he missed a bunch of time, but he's been a huge uh, cog in the team. I know you're excited. That area is excited. There was a late game last night, so I appreciate you being up for this interview this morning. So let's roll into some preseason NCAA talk. And I got to start off. How long have you been doing these national rankings for the Open Mat? Uh, for the Open Mat, this is my second year of doing collegiate rankings. Uh, the year before, I did high school rankings for the Open Mat, and then. Uh, for almost 10 years before that, I had my own site, uh, d1collegewrestling.net, and I did uh, college rankings there. So um, probably all, almost about 10 years total on the college side. And we all know Twitter gives the fans a voice. We call them keyboard warriors. But how many complaints do you get after each time you post these rankings and any interesting stories? Um, yeah, you you get uh, you get your share of uh, a couple of them here and there. Um, I think the high school is worse than the college because um, you know a lot of the high school guys, you know, they you can have the top three guys in the country not hit at all um, through any of the big tournaments, and you know maybe have they all have their uh, claim to the number one spot. But uh, geez, uh, interesting stories. I know. Um, Actually, this year I had uh, a series of emails from one particular guy. Um, he wanted to know why Nick Suriano wasn't in the rankings at number one, uh, at 133. Um, he wanted to know why Makai Lewis wasn't there at 165 <laughs> and, you know, proceeded to call me incompetent and in, in, uh, a couple other things um, for not having those guys in there. Um so, and I don't know if we'll address that, but both of these guys are supposed to take Olympic red shirts uh, this season, which, um, you know, as we talk, you know, may come up once or twice, but that's going to be a big factor this year nationally. I was going to say, easy to do. Just send them the link that the school send out and you don't even have to say <laughs> anything else. You could be right. <laughs> but I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up Olympic red shirts because we're going to start off a little broad and in my opinion, this season is going to look like any other in recent years. And with the Summer Olympics coming next summer, 
the introduction of an Olympic redshirt has really hit college wrestling. Guys that have qualified, they have the option to take this college season off and still retain that year of eligibility in trying to qualify for the Olympics. And long story short, qualifications for the U.S. Olympic team mainly are coming at the U.S. Open in December. Then two weeks after the NCAAs, the U.S. Olympic trials will be held. So it's really hard for these college guys to wrestle in college and then still try to get that Olympic bid. But I think everybody... They haven't really declared yet, but quite a few have. I saw at least three national champions from last year are already taking that Olympic redshirt, and many other All-Americans are have fallen. And your opinion, how different will this NCAA season be? Yeah, there, there's going to be a couple of weight classes where you know we're looking at the top, and instead of having that one dominant guy that you know we're we're ninety percent sure is going to win the title, there's maybe three or four are five guys who have a good shot at that title. Whoever has the best uh, tournament in March is going to come out on top. Um, So it's going to have, there's going to be a little more parity, uh, at least uh, in most of these weight classes compared to previous seasons. I was going to say, as an NCAA journalist who covers the NCAAs, and of course you cover all levels of wrestling. Do you think the Olympic retro, is it good or bad for NCAA wrestling? Um, I think overall it's good for NCAA wrestling. If uh, if some of these young guys that are are seeking the Olympic red shirt and in a spot of the Olympic team, if they do make it, like uh, Kyle Snyder in 2016 and Jaden Cox, they both made the team while they had NCAA eligibility. I think it just uh, you know reflects positively on the sport. And before we start to break down each weight class, what do you think of the NCAAs going to Minnesota and being held at the Viking Stadium this March? Um, I'm always up for new ideas and new ways to expose our sport to a broader audience. So, um, you know, there should be more opportunities for fans to get in and see the tournament maybe for the first time. I know there was a, a lot made last year about Pittsburgh and, you know, people not being able to get as many tickets as they had in the past. So, you know, it, it's there. It's, it's, uh, it should be an interesting scene. Um, yeah, I, I am just like anyone else. I want to see how like the sight lines play out and, you know, there's going to be some, I don't know, uh, maybe hurdles or, uh, just, uh, things to get used to from a media standpoint as far as covering the event. But, you know, overall, I'm pretty optimistic about it. I was going to say, NCAA is always a very fun time. Everybody's looking forward to it. Plenty of tickets. There's going to be plenty of seats. But yeah, I think the sight lines and the mat setups are going to be what everybody's looking for. And I didn't write down too many notes. I just pulled up the open mat and I'm going to be looking at the rankings as we go. I think we'll just go through the weight classes. I'll offer my two cents on the NC State guy and just let you... I want you to get your thoughts, but starting at 125, all four NCAA semifinalists from last year are returning, including two-time NCAA champ Spencer Lee of Iowa, and also from the ACC, Jack Mueller of Virginia is back after he was the runner-up. NC State, we're going to be having somebody new at 125 as four-time NCAA qualifier. Sean Foss has graduated, leaving that spot open. The early favorite, redshirt freshman Jacob Camacho from Danbury, Connecticut, you have Jacob starting the season out at number 13 nationally. He is your highest ranked freshman at that weight. And first, I have to ask you, how hard is it to rank freshmen in these preseason rankings? Yeah, for me, at least, I don't uh, I rank any true freshmen just because it's really kind of apples and oranges comparison. Um, it is difficult with a, a, tr- a redshirt freshman like Camacho you know, he, he wrestled actually pretty frequently, but there are some other redshirt freshmen that may only have wrestled in one or two open tournaments and they had good wins there, but it's, it's not the same as the, the weekly grind of the, uh, the guys who are actually competing. And so you kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little more conservative, um, uh, kind of against the freshmen. So I'm I'm usually going to rank them maybe a little lower than uh, maybe some other people and uh, maybe lower than my instincts say. 
And our fans did not get to see Jacob too much in freestyle this offseason, but can you talk about his style of wrestling and how you see his rookie going, considering the amount of talent back at this weight class? Yeah, I, I'm I'm a big fan of his. I think that uh, I think he can rise pretty quickly from that 13 spot. Um, you you do have those guys at the top of the weight class, like you mentioned, uh, the Spencer Lees and Mueller's, and uh, you know those guys are going to be tough to beat. But the the guys ahead of Camacho in the rankings, uh, the immediate guys ahead of him, um, you know, th- those most of those guys aren't even ones that have gotten that close to all American in, in the past. So, you know, he's one I could see moving up pretty quickly. 133 pounds is a little different from 125. The top three placers last year are all taking Olympic red shirts, and I'm assuming fixed from Oklahoma State is, of course. And NC State's also looking for a new starter at this weight as Tariq Wilson will be moving up to 141. Strong competition in the NC State practice room for this spot, hence why nobody is ranked here for the pack by the open mat. But I think maybe Jarrett Trombley might have been one of those others receiving votes. But Pitts, Mickey, Felipe is the returning ACC champion. A lot of youth in the ACC here. How do you see 133 playing out? Yeah, uh, 133 should be pretty interesting. Um, we talked about it last year as being one of the tougher weight classes in recent memory. Um, you know, you saw that as you had a guy like Tariq Wilson that, that had such a great season uh, as a freshman or great NCAA tournament. Um, you know, he ended up wrestling into the round of 12 last year and you have a uh, flippy in the ACC. Um, it's with all those guys registering, it's going to be a little more manageable this year, but, and, and you're right. Trombley is a guy that I did kind of have in that next year, right after 20. So, you know, he's on my radar as a guy, he jumps out to a fast start. You know, he may work his way in there. Um, also in the ACC, there's a guy named Colin Girardi. Um, he was a Virginia kid that uh, probably didn't have a lot of attention nationally coming out of high school, but he had some good wins last year while redshirting. So uh, it's going to be pretty competitive again at the ACC there. Two-time NCAA champion Yanni Diakamahalas will also redshirt this season. And the top three placers are all not wrestling this season at 141. And like I mentioned, Tariq Wilson will be moving up a weight class after competing at 133 his first two years. Tariq went third place in 2018 and he was one win from All-American last year. New weight for Tariq. What do you think of his chances at this unproven weight class nationally? Um, I, I like him there. Um, you know, yeah, I don't you know, know what's going on, you know, behind closed doors at practice. He seems to me like a uh, you know, tall kid that probably could put on the weight to get up to one forty one and it not be a problem at all. Um yeah, that's a that's a weight class where, you know, he sits at eleven right now in our preseason rankings and um almost anyone between one and eleven right now, um, I could see if they had a good weekend, you know, coming away with the NCAA title, there isn't, that's one of the weight classes I mentioned where there's not anybody that's going to be head and shoulders above the rest of the weight class. The top kid there, Dom Demas was a freshman last year and I think he had nine losses. So um, it, it's up for grabs and, you know, I, I like Wilson's chances there. A little special treat. We haven't, finalized it yet, but South Beach duels, NC State might be taking on Oklahoma so we could see Tariq against that preseason number one. But moving up to 149, another open spot in the Wolfpack's lineup. Your preseason number one, O'Connor from North Carolina is the lone ACC rep in this weight class. And NC State's going to have a trio of guys fighting for the spot, all very young, all very new to the lineup. So here's another weight class nationally with a lot of unproven guys, especially in the ACC. So 149 is pretty wide open this year, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And you said that uh, North Carolina's O'Connor is number one there. Um, it, another weight where you could see any of the top six or seven guys come away with the national title um, in behind O'Connor in the conference. It's really it's really going to be up for grabs. It's one where, you know, if uh, someone really steps up and establishes themselves as the guy for NC State, you know, they could 
get into the ACC finals, perhaps. And, you know, you've been around that tournament a lot. Um, I have as well. Uh, getting one upset or, you know, one guy you may not have casted in the finals, and that can always be uh, the difference between first and second place. I think it's safe to say Richard Jr., Hayden Hiley, he's going to be the consensus number one at 157 pounds, including by you guys at the open mat. He went second place in 2018 and fourth place last year at the NCAAs. How do you like Hayden's chances for a national championship? I mean, I think he has a really good shot at the title. Um, you know, his two biggest contenders are going to come from number two, Caleb Young from Iowa, number three, Ryan Deacon from Northwestern. Um, you know, Young's a guy that kind of broke out last year after spending his first couple of years at Iowa at 165 and 174. Um, then another name that I could see coming into title contention would be uh, junior world champion David Carr, who's currently – uh, 15 for Iowa State, but I could see him uh, rising into a contender as well. What about this for an early season matchup? NC State's first duel of the year is against Old Dominion in Reynolds Coliseum, and they have senior Larry Early ranked number four to start the season. This is a number one versus number four matchup, and surely a lot of eyes are going to be on this duel, including friend of the podcast, Jason Bryant. How do you guys who cover college wrestling like these early season matchups against top ranked guys. Oh, I, I love it. It's uh, it's like, you know, when you're watching college football and you have one of these uh, super matchups, the first uh, you know weekend or two of the season, rather than, uh, you know, playing a directional school. Um, so yeah. And, and from a, a marketing standpoint, um, I'm sure it's, it's fun being able to, say to your student body and you know, people who aren't hardcore wrestling fans, you say, we got our number one guy against the number four guy in the country. You know, that's something that casual sports fans understand and uh, is going to be something that gets them in the building. We're going to go back to back Bullard brothers for NC state at 165 and 174. 165 is another weight where the national champion, he's taken an Olympic redshirt, and that just happens to be Virginia Tech's Mikai Lewis. Now, at 165, we still have Vincenzo Joseph in this weight class. He has two national titles and NCAA finals appearance. And the Hokies, they have David McFadden going back to 165. But for NC State, you have Thomas Bullard starting out at number 12. He was the ACC runner-up to Lewis and really battled him in that matchup. Can you see Thomas making a run for All American honors this year? Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, you mentioned. There's I think four guys at the top of the weight class that are multiple time All Americans, and uh, a couple other returners as well. But you know, after that, there's there's a couple spots on the the back end of the podium where it's you know definitely not determined. Of course, it's not determined now, but um, you don't have uh, these huge favorites. Um, so you know, at the twelve spot. You know, if you're looking at it from the NCAA tournament standpoint, that's only upsetting, you know, one guy that's ranked ahead of him. Of course, that's easier said than done. And, easy, you know, it doesn't always work out that way, the way upsets happen at the NCAA tournament and the way brackets fall. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't see why he couldn't. Our other bowler, Daniel, is ranked number 20 this year. He's up at 174, and only two ranked guys here from the ACC. You have UNC's Kane at number 14, and since I'm very NC State biased, and this is our podcast, I should point out, Daniel was 2-0 and against Kane last year with a major in the duel and a tech fall at the ACC's, but this is a wide open weight in the ACC. How do you see it playing out? Yeah, and, and Kane was a guy that kind of um, was one of the last spots at the NCAA tournament and then uh, ended up going on a good run there. So for me, when I do rankings, I kind of put emphasis on NCAA tournament first, uh, finish first, and then kind of work from there with head to head matchups. But yeah, there's, there's no reason why, uh, Bullard couldn't get his, uh, first, uh, ACC title. And then, you know, again, as we're looking at kind of the, after the top couple guys here at 174, um, it, it kind of thins out a little bit to you know the point where you know some some guys that haven't gotten onto the podium before could jump up in there. 
Now, 184 in the ACC might be the complete opposite of 174. It is really loaded, both in the conference and nationally. And I'm not sure, but I don't think Saheed Valencia of Arizona State has said if he's going to redshirt or not. But he won the title at 174 last year, and he's eventually going to move up to 84. And the ACC has Pitts Bonacorsi at number seven, Virginia Tech's Bolin at number eight. But for the Wolfpack, coming off a redshirt, Trent Hidley checks in at number 12 to start the season. And just like Camacho at 125, Trent is your highest-ranked freshman in his weight class. He won silver at the Junior World Championships back in August in Freestyle. What is his ceiling here in his first season? Um, Well, I really think that when it's all said and done, um, he's going to be a guy that's challenging you know, four spot and, you know, say the NCA semis or, you know, I could see him finishing very high there. He's been a guy that I've, I've been high on for a while. So yeah, that, that 12, it, it looks pretty good for a freshman, but um, I do think that's conservative for him. And uh, it certainly wouldn't surprise me if he places pretty high on the NCA podium as a freshman. Going to 197 pounds, another Wolfpack wrestler making a weight change as Richard Jr. Nick Renan will be going up to his third weight class in as many seasons. And he started 10-0 and and was ranked number two last year at 184. Then he tore his ACL, but still finished out the season. You have Renan at number 12, second in the ACC behind UVA's Iola at number nine. Assuming he's back to full health here, how do you see Renan's season playing out here at 197? Yeah, it's really unfortunate how that turned out for him because, uh, you know, I I was really impressed with him that first uh, month of the season or so. And, you know, credit to him for, you know, trying to gut it out and, you know, trying to uh, overcome that injury. But, uh, you know, 197 is going to be a funny weight class. There's a lot of guys that are ranked ahead of him that may have been injured last year and missed time or are switching weight classes or redshirted. So there, there's a lot of guys that really haven't wrestled each other much. So, um, you know, I think that uh, his style is going to work out well. I think he's probably going to be uh, a little more athletic than most of the guys that he faces there. So, again, I could see some uh, good things for him, and it certainly wouldn't surprise me if he got on the podium this year. Heavyweight, again, it's a toss-up for the Wolfpack. Three guys right now in that practice room are all vying for that spot. NCAA champion Anthony Cesar of Penn State's back, and you have a duo from the ACC ranked at number 11 and number 12, and Wolfpack fans are always interested in heavyweight as Nick Wazdowski is trying for the U.S. Olympic team, and you never know who's going to be taking that Olympic red shirt and trying to get his spot. But how do you see heavyweight looking this year for the NCAAs? Um, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. We're um, I had written an article last year, the probably the midpoint of the season, and I called the beginning of the heavyweight renaissance because um, most of the contenders there were freshmen, or there are some great incoming freshmen. So I can see this weight class being, um, you know, if you're looking, there's a lot of sophomores there now. So these guys are going to be hitting each other for the next couple of years. Um, in that article, I mentioned. Uh, the two freshmen from NC State as guys, um, you know, they, uh, they're they probably going to develop into good heavyweights where, uh, you know, Wilson just missed out on uh, getting a bid to the tournament last year. But in, in most instances, um, you'll see maybe a freshman heavyweight that doesn't make it to the tournament and just kind of grows into his body is in another year in the D one room and then comes out as a sophomore. And, you know, people are like, where did this guy come from? So um, last year was kind of an anomaly with so many great freshman heavyweights. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun, but uh, you know, I could see you know, one of the Wolfpack guys developing and uh, you know, making a run at things this year. Earl, I want to thank you again for the breakdown. It's always fun catching up with you. I love talking rankings. I know the coaches don't. So as an SID, I appreciate that. (laughs) But let our fans know where they can get all of their college wrestling news this upcoming season. Yeah, it's uh, theopennet.com. We're going to have a lot of previews. Uh, We've got an ACC preview coming out next week. Um, I think I hit most of the 
ACC, including NC State in our early lineup looks uh, over the summer. But uh, yeah, uh, come back frequently. Uh, I I try to think I I don't try to be humble, but I would say I think we have the uh, best written content you're going to find about uh, wrestling, especially at the college level, um, on the internet. But uh, yeah, so give us a shot. Give us a try. I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Poppins podcast covering all things NC State Wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack for Wrestling fans, go Pack! The Pack Mentality Poppins podcast is produced by the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to matttalkonline.com.